Have you ever wondered where do koalas hang when they're not with the gang? Is a zebra a horse in striped pajamas? If rhinos are so tough, who'd want to mess with one? And what's a sheep like under all that woolly stuff? Well, the answers are all ahead, so jump on in. It's National Geographic's Really Wild Animals. <laughs> Gang, it's me, Farmer Spin, and we're heading on safari. You heard me, a farmyard safari. We're going to visit not only those awesome animals and fabulous feather heads on your average farm, but their amazing wild cousins from all over the world. And if you think you've been there and done that, guess again. Because take it from me, your farmyard friends will never seem the same. Are you ready to ramble? Grab your pith helmet and pitchfork, and let's get to it. If I can just get this thing into gear. Whoa! idea, right? Oh, that's better. When I said farmyard safari, I was talking about all those amazing animals you find around the farm. Like horses, pigs, and sheep. But even the tamest turkey, the politest pig, and the most civilized sheep came from a wild ancestor. And you know what? So did you. <laughs> Thousands of years ago, someone had a great idea. Instead of running around trying to catch your dinner, why not raise your own? No fuss, no mass. Today, farmyard animals still have wild relatives rolling around and not just on holiday. Most everyone recognizes this wild horse, but would you believe there are also wild pigs, even wild turkeys? I said wild turkeys, not weird chickens. That's better. But before we visit those guys, let's start with an animal I'm kind of soft on. I'm talking about that woolly jumper. The original butthead. The sheep! 
Sheep were one of the very first animals domesticated. That means raised and bred by people thousands of years ago. Since that time, farmers have bred different kinds of sheep together to come up with all sorts of crazy variations, hundreds of breeds worldwide. People use sheep not only as food, but for their warm and fuzzy wool. But don't put it on yet. Wait till it gets spun and knitted into a sweater. People also use sheep for their rich milk, which makes, among other things, an excellent ice cream. Sheep are herd animals, and that means they like to stick together. But even in a bunch, sheep have natural enemies, like wolves, just waiting to pounce, so farmers need all the help they can get. Ta-da! Here comes help now! He's a special sheepdog. But, wait a second, aren't dogs related to wolves? How come the farmer trusts this guy anyway? It's like this. These special pooches are raised with sheep since puppyhood. So acting like a big brother and scaring away enemies comes as second nature to these canine comrades. Of course, these are domesticated sheep we're talking about. Because you know what? Wild sheep are even more weird than their tame cousins. One wild relative is called a doll sheep. They can be found high up in the mountains of Alaska and northern Canada. Like all youngsters, doll lambs just love to play. Some of their favorite games include try to balance on top of mum, butt heads until your brain hurts, and the ever popular jump in the air until you fall over. These games teach lambs important skills, like how to climb rocky mountains, run over stony ground, and uh, well, how to butt heads until your brain hurts. Well, okay, it doesn't really hurt at all, because these guys have especially thick skulls. And when they grow up, male doll sheep, or rams, have to fight for mating privileges. Learning how to run up a rocky hillside isn't as dumb as it sounds, either. The sheep isn't just enjoying the view. He's managed to outfox that hungry wolf waiting below. Even that little bird, the magpie, thinks it's pretty funny. We interrupt this magpie to bring you Farm Cop. Today's thrilling escapade, the case of the mixed up litter. I got the call on Friday. A frantic farmer named Fred was freaking. Hey livestock, he says. You gotta help me out. My hog just had eight baby piglets. Why are you seeing red, Fred? I said. It's terrible, says Fred. I can't keep them straight. I was over there in a flash to case the joint. I says to myself, self, Piglets always line up in order, so once we get them in a row, Farmer Fred will always be able to tell them apart. I said to Fred, don't lose your head. I'm gonna put your pigs in a lineup. It's always worked for me. But that's no good, says Fred. The numbers will fall off. Fred, I said, don't act brain dead. Just stick on the numbers and make sure they're red. He tells me to cut with the bad rhymes, but he does as I say, see? It works like this. The best milk flow is up close to the mother's head. As piglets are born, they head straight for those nipples, grabbing the best place they can find. And once they figured out who goes where, piglets stick to the same feeding order. Chalk it up to instinct. After all, why do you think they call them animals? Meanwhile, back on the farm... Hey, you big turkey! Yeah, I'm talking to you! Get a load of this bunch. Farm turkeys are so big and bulky, they can fly about as far as you can. Meaning not. Hey, blow your nose! In case you were wondering, that long droopy thing is actually a piece of skin called a snood. The Turk is also famous for being... Well, he's kind of, um... He's not what you'd call the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> but hey! Who needs brains if all you have to do is look good at dinner? It's like this. After centuries of domestication, farm animals like turkeys have lost their natural smarts. They don't have to take care of themselves, which means they don't have to be fast, strong, or even intelligent. But that's the domesticated turkey. Compared to his couch potato cousin, the wild turkey is lean and keen, a running machine. He's got amazing hearing and eyesight, all the better to find food and avoid danger. 
and he's no slouch in the flying department either. Wild turkeys live all across North America. And what do they do all day? Well, male turkeys, called toms, spend a lot of time getting into fights with each other. But that's pretty much a guy thing. Males of all kinds need to know not only who's the boss, but who gets the girl. These two are going neck and neck. And I mean neck. Of course, winning doesn't necessarily mean anything. Even when one male beats another, he then has to display or strut his turkey stuff to his lady love. It's her choice after all. But she'll soon pick the proper papa for her turkey toddlers. And just try saying that three times fast. And let's go to the videotape. Here we are at Eggside for some hot high speed hatching and holy cow this shell is shaking and the chips are flying I'm telling you this little fellow wants to come out of there no doubt about it on the count of three three but this shell is tough stuff and believe you me not every tiny turkey tot has the muscle to break on through can he make it can he make it the crowd is going wild we have a newborn baby turkey chick weighing in at two ounces dripping wet. Our little champion is the latest sensation in the turkey nation. There's one thing baby turkeys, called poults, do better than anybody, and that's imitate mom. If she pecks, they peck. If she walks, they walk. And if she rolls around in the dust like a maniac, well, it's turkey see, turkey do. Besides, Nothing beats a good dust bath to get rid of teeny, tiny, itchy, scratchy bugs. Azzoo! But being a turkey is no bowl of cherries, or moths, for that matter. Hungry enemies like the hawk like nothing better than a bite-sized turkey burger. Mom sounds the alarm, and her kids go undercover. <laughs> After all that excitement, it's time for a good night's sleep. Who needs bunk beds? There's nothing softer than good old mum. Lights out. Good night. And moving right along. It's not just all new, it's all moo. The pet sensation that's sweeping the nation, the cow. She's not just a farm babe anymore. Cows are friendly, stylish, and convenient. No more late night trips to the mini mart. This big sweetie can crank out over 20 quarts in a single day. Utterly unbelievable? Guess again. Easy to take care of, no batteries needed. Just feed her 60 pounds of food a day and a bathtub of drinking water. Everyone loves a cow. In Germany, they adorn them with flowers every fall. But you can decorate your cow any old way you like. You'll be dancing for joy. Your friends will say wow when they see your cow and how. So order now. Available at Brad Cows, Cowstons, and Cows R Us. Offer subject to parental approval, which you'll never get in a million years, so don't even bother. And back at the farm, like the domesticated turkey, your basic farmyard pig is bred to be fed. Well, some pigs are just so adorable, people keep them as pets. And who can blame them? But since most little piggies go to market, farmers breed them and feed them until they're... Uh, well, until they're as fat as pigs. One prime-sized porker can weigh as much as you, two grown-ups and five of your friends put together. That's close to 800 pounds, which makes someone very happy. But you know what? It's only the domesticated pig who's such a hog. No way? Way. Because wait till you get a load of the wild pig. Unlike farm pigs, wild pigs have to hunt and dig for food for hours and hours each day, which means they can get downright skinny. And believe it or not, when left on their own, pigs almost never overeat. Wild pigs can be found all over the world. Want to see? That's better. Most of my continents have some kind of wild pig running around somewhere. One of my favorites lives down here in Africa. He's called the warthog. And he's not what you'd call a beauty, even by pig standards. But you can always count on him for loads of personality, not to mention warts. Which explains that charming name of his, warthog. The thing is, they're not really warts. Just great big fleshy lumps and bumps. 
Don't worry, they're not catching. And they do protect one's eyes when grubbing up a spiny snack or tackling a rifle. And that's not all. Warthogs spend their nights in underground burrows. Not only is it cosy and warm down there, it's safe. The last warthog to turn in backs her way down. That leaves her pointy tusks sticking outwards, keeping hungry enemies away. But don't worry, despite the tough act and nasty tusks, warthogs are really a bunch of softies who'd rather run than fight. Which reminds me of a story. Wow! And now Mother Goose, the spinning storyteller, will read to us the tale of the four little warthogs. Once upon a time, in the far-off African savanna, lived four little warthogs with their mom, grandmom and great-grandmom. The four were warned to look out for the big bank jackal. And speaking of which, here she comes. <laughs> what did the piggies do? Can you guess? Hey, wrong story, bub. Pigs can't build houses, remember? No, the four little warthogs ran as fast as they could. But they ran so fast and so far, they became lost. And though their mum, grandmum and great grandmum ran to find them, they went the wrong way. <sighs> the four little warthogs found their way home, but where was everyone? What could the poor little piggies do? The wisest little warthog decided the best thing to do was hide until the coast was clear. And sure enough, their family came trotting back. And so the four little warthogs, their mom, grandmom and great grandmom, rolled in the mud and lived happily ever after the end. Hmm, I wonder who's minding the farm. The horse has been domesticated for about 4,000 years. In that time, we've used them for just about everything. People have even worn their hair and drunk their milk. Today, we use horses to give rides, pull carts, control crowds, and run races. But wouldn't you know that's a domesticated horse I'm talking about? Because his wild relative is a horse of a totally different color. Wild horses run free all over the world. In the United States, you can find a wild horse called the Mustang. They're the great, great, great and great, great, great grandchildren of tame horses that escaped a long time ago and became wild again. There are wild horses in South America too. Real life cowboys called gauchos are experts at breaking wild horses. Don't worry, they put them back together when they're finished. Breaking actually means taming and it takes a long time, more than a year. There's one wild horse you're not going to find at any roundup because he's got way too much attitude. It's a zebra. And dig those crazy stripes. Zebras come from the continent of Africa. Zebras live in groups made up of a stallion or male zebra and several mares or females. Add a bunch of their kids or foals tagging along and you can see it's quite a crowd. In any herd, it's important to know where you fit in, but how do you do that when everyone looks exactly alike? Whoa! I think I'm seeing double! Well, believe it or not, while people have trouble telling zebras apart, it's no sweat for the zebras. Each set of stripes makes a pattern that's as unique as a person's fingerprints. As soon as a baby's born, mom gets to work. She has to make sure the very first thing Junior does is memorize her smell and stripes. A baby zebra's worst nightmare? Getting separated from his mom. Other moms won't take care of a foal that isn't theirs, and that means bad news if you ever get lost. Let's see now, there were two big stripes and a little wiggly stripe on her left shoulder. Or was it her right shoulder? Well, when all else fails, there's always plan B. That's zebra for, hey mom, I'm over here. Other moms check to see if it's theirs with a quick sniff. Nope. <sighs> Although someone could use a shower. Hey, I wonder if your mom could pick you out of a crowd by just your smell. Don't worry, using sight, sound and smell. 
Our little lost zebra is finally able to find his mum. You can bet he's not going to wander off like that again. Wild and tame, for all their differences, both have so much in common, it's hard to know which hat to wear. People have been domesticating animals for thousands and thousands of years. Farm life has turned what were once really wild animals into some of our best farmyard buddies. But you know what? There's still a little wildness left on the farm. Don't believe me? Well, just take a look at our farm animals' wild cousins. And you'll know what I mean. Some place warm to sleep in, some place with lots to eat. A sturdy roof to keep you dry, would it make your world complete? A search for food in the forest, a fresh water stream. Chasing off the enemy. Would you rather be wild? Would you rather be tame? To live safe in human company or take a risk in running free? Behind the fence there's green grass, a barnyard full of hay. A hen house for hatching, would it make your day? The challenge of survival. on our farmyard safari. Now, how would you like to meet some more of my amazing animal buddies? I can just get this cape on. Look! It's a bird! It's not a bird! It's Super Spin! And I'm off to right wrongs, help the helpless, and do lots of neat hero stuff like that! Don't you wish there were real-life superheroes to save the day when things got hairy? Well, you know something? There really are. Every day, people are rescuing not only individual animals that need help, but entire species. Or different kinds of animals as well. These animals owe their health, their freedom, and their very lives to some amazing people. But who are these real-life rescuers, and how do they do what they do? It's not like they're super powerful, and they can't fly or even turn invisible. Believe it or not, animal rescuers are normal folks from all over the world. Hey, easy with that dolphin. Some are scientists, or photographers, or wildlife experts. Others are just people who care. Hey, if we tag along, maybe we can pick up some cool moves and learn to be superheroes too. So grab your cape and let's get flying! Ah! Help is on! Help is on! Help is on the way! Is your life in danger? Are you on the run? Are you tired and hungry? Scared of everyone? When you're in a fix, when you're in a mess
our species. There are well over a thousand endangered species on the planet today. Endangered means there are so few of these guys left they may die out altogether like the dinosaurs, never to return. Animals become endangered when they lose their homes or habitat or when the kinds of food they eat run out. Other animals are hunted for their fur, horns or feathers. Which always look a lot better on the original owners, don't you agree? The good news is People all over the world are working hard to save these animals and the first step to help an endangered species is to study it. One of my favorite animals of all lives over here in the forests of central China. It's a panda and there's a chance you've even seen a real life one yourself. That's because one out of every ten pandas lives in a zoo somewhere. Wild pandas are endangered because the forests where they live have been cut down all over China. And some people even hunt the panda for its black and white fur. Zoos can be safe homes for endangered animals like the panda. The problem is, pandas have a really hard time having babies in captivity. Don't ask why, nobody knows for sure. But Professor Pan Wansha and his colleague Luja are trying to find out. They spend months every year camping out and studying the wild panda. Pandas are usually pretty shy, but hey, if you had scientists following you around for 10 years, you'd get used to them too. This female panda even lets Professor Pan visit her cave, which is one major invitation. Because hidden inside is her most precious possession, a newborn baby. Hey, this kid may be little, but she sure is loud. Seven weeks go by before Junior finally looks like a chip off the old panda block. Like any good doctor, Professor Pan gives the baby its first physical. Sure enough, she's as healthy as a horse. Or should I say, as perfect as a panda. When this panda gets bigger, she'll join her mother on long eating expeditions. What looks like a bunch of sticks to you, looks like dinner to a panda. Bamboo is just about the only thing they'll eat, up to 80 pounds of the stuff a day. Well, at least you always have a toothpick handy. Pan and Lou put radio collars on both mother and daughter. That way, they'll always be able to keep track of their panda pals. What's more, all the stuff they're finding out is helping solve the mystery of zoo pandas and why they aren't having babies like their wild cousins. And that's good news for everyone. Hey, kids! Sour on cities? Sick of suburbia? Can't stand the country? In short, are you just fed up with being you? Well, do us a favor and get a life! Call 555-WILD and enroll now in our six-week crash course! You'll travel the world to study with our really wild filmmakers. These guys will teach you everything you need to know to become an award-winning, world-famous animal movie maker. Learn how to get up close and personal. Learn how to get great shots without getting eaten. Learn how to film really disgusting nature scenes without tossing your cookies. Act now and say ta-ta to tedium. Offer void where prohibited. Filming endangered animals is one way to teach people about their problems, but sometimes it's not enough. Africa, anyone? On the eastern coast of this continent is a country called Kenya. And deep in the heart of Kenya is a kind of park called Ngare Sergoi. It's a special sanctuary, or place that's protected, that's home to 16 wild rhinos. Ngare Sergoi was founded by Anna Mertz, who loves her rhinos like they were part of her own family. Samia, Samia is one of her favorites, a six-year-old orphan. She likes to follow Anna around. 
Always on the lookout for a little rhino snack action. I'm the only mother she's known. She never knew her mother. Her mother deserted her at birth and walked off. So she's, she's very gentle with me. Well, she's just my friend. If she hears me walking in the bush, she comes and joins me. And it's, it's just a, an incredibly lucky relationship. Anna knows better than anyone just how dangerous it is to be a wild rhino. It all gets down to that amazing horn of theirs. To an illegal hunter or poacher, a rhino horn is as valuable as gold. It's used to make medicine and fancy ornaments. To be on the safe side, Anna cuts the horns off three of her rhinos. They don't look quite as cool, but at least this way, Anna hopes poachers will leave them alone. And just to make extra, extra sure, Anna pays armed guards to stand watch, 24 hours a day. But besides poachers, there's another danger threatening Anna's beloved rhinos. Is it lions? Crocodiles? Tourists in silly hats taking pictures? Guess again, it's giraffes. There are hundreds of giraffes living in Ngara Sergoi, and only 16 rhinos. Not only do these guys eat up all the rhinos' food, they destroy a lot of bark, which kills off the trees. Anna may be a major rhino fan, but she'd never heard a giraffe. So she and her friends came up with a great idea. If there's not enough green and leafy stuff for your giraffes, why not bring your giraffes to the green and leafy stuff? You can bet it's a major operation just to round up 500 giraffes. The next step is to load the giraffes into special trucks. Then all that's left is to drive them to a wildlife reserve all the way across Kenya. But after the three hour car ride, the giraffes are happy exploring their new home. And back at Ngara Sergoi, Anna and her rhinos can finally breathe a sigh of relief. These rhinos are lucky to have a friend like Anna, who protects them in their natural habitat. But other wild animals get taken from their homes every day, which can lead to all kinds of problems. Coming soon to a theater near you. She was a cop with a zoology degree. He was a police officer and a biologist. Together, they had one mission, to make Miami safe for animals and people alike. That's because they're conservation officers from the Game Commission. Miami's where exotic animals are shipped into the U.S. from all over the world. But once in a while, they get loose. And when they do, who are you going to call? Call the Commission. It takes a special cop to lasso this alligator look-alike called a caiman. Specially trained to deal with monkey business. These cool-headed cops can even corral a cougar. But watch out, don't park on that python. It's all in a day's work when you're a conservation officer from the Game Commission. Check local theaters for listing. Now I know there's one animal I'm forgetting. Meet my special nut-nosed buddy, the koala. He lives all the way over here in the eastern part of Australia. Everyone loves koalas because they're just too cute for words. Which is good news if you're a koala. There are laws making it a crime to hurt any of these guys. What's more, any time a fire or other disaster threatens these little cuties, people are all too happy to help. Who wouldn't want to adopt a cuddly koala orphan? Okay, they may get into your hair once in a while, but they also have a way of getting into your heart. Once this koala kid is big enough, he'll be set free. Unlike your pet cat or dog, the koala's a wild animal and he won't be happy until he's back in his natural home. But that's where the problem is. You see, although the koala is protected, its habitat isn't. And saving just the animal isn't enough. You have to save its home as well. That's because koalas, like all animals, are very picky when it comes to where they like to live. If a koala could have only one gift on his birthday, it would probably be a eucalyptus tree. Because not only do these guys live in these trees, that's pretty much all they eat too. Eucalyptus leaves. 
The problem for koalas is that more and more eucalyptus trees are being cut down each year to make room for houses, highways and other development. And that means fewer and fewer places for the koala to live. But some people are trying to help the koala. They're teaching others about how important it is to protect not only our wild animals, but our wild animal habitats. And some kids are doing even more. These animal rescuers have started planting new eucalyptus trees to make up for the ones being cut down. Who knows? In another five to ten years, this may be home for a whole new generation of wild and cuddly koalas. We interrupt this program to bring you a word from a cranky guy in Baltimore. Dear really wild TV producers, you know, a person watching your show about rescuers may get the idea that people are the only ones running around saving things. What about animals who rescue animals? Or even animals who rescue people? Lots of animals I personally know are more than happy to lend a paw or a hoof or a wing when others need help. Okay, so they're not so great at writing checks or calling a doctor. And okay, maybe you can't really count on Fluffy or Duke in a pinch. But still, hey, give them some credit. Burning buildings, speeding trains, floods, famine. You name the crisis and animals have helped out. So the next time you go around thinking people are the only ones doing good deeds around here, I have one word to say to you. Ha! Sincerely yours, Cranky. It's true. Animals like this rescue dog save people all the time. And a good thing too. Human or animal, we all need a little help sometimes. Which reminds me of this really cool place I know. If you're ever in trouble and happen to be in France, just check out the Refuge de l'Arche, or Arc Refuge. Oh, and did I mention you have to be an animal? Preferably wild? I don't know. The Arc Refuge is located in the Loire Valley, near the town of Chateau Gantier. At first glance, it looks like an ordinary zoo. But two amazing facts make the Arc something special. One is that every animal here has been rescued from abuse, neglect, or abandonment. And the other is that practically all the workers here are kids, just like you! The Ark started in 1974 when Christian Uchte opened a sanctuary for birds. Soon people started bringing all kinds of animals in and Christian just didn't have the heart to turn them away. Some of the animals at the Ark used to belong to circuses, but most were once kept as pets. Sadly, most people are really bad at taking care of wild animals. Folks usually mean well. But what do you do when your cute little cougar kitten turns into a 120-pound Major League grown-up? As a result, exotic pets, ones that are rare and special, are often neglected abandoned or even put to sleep when their owners can't handle them anymore. That's when Christian and his kid squad come to the rescue. They'll make sure that animals like Mishka the bear, Quasimodo the cougar, and Dolly the chimp will finally have a safe place to call home. It takes real heroes to care for animals with no place to go. But there are also animal rescuers trying to bring animals back to their wild homes. Gambia is a country in West Africa. It's also where Janice Carter runs a very special camp. It's a training camp for chimpanzees. Janice is in charge of making sure these former pets know how to go back to their natural homes. What's so hard about going home again? You'd be surprised. Janice should know. Back in the US, she once took care of a pet chimp named Lucy. When Lucy became too hard to handle, it was decided to bring her back to her natural home, in the wild. But after years of living with people, Lucy had forgotten how to take care of herself without human help. Janice had to reteach her everything she'd forgotten. By teaching Lucy, Janice became such an expert, she's now practically a chimp herself. Over the years, she's patiently taught dozens of former pet chimps skills all wild chimps have, like how to pick berries, how to open hard shells by smacking them on the ground, and how to eat bugs off your buddies. 
Yuck. Janice still misses her old pal, but that doesn't stop her from teaching other chimps basic survival. She knows that chimps, like all wild animals, are happiest living free in their natural homes, so she makes sure her friends can enjoy the best gift of all, their freedom. Hey, so what can you do to be a superhero? Well, you can always learn. That means listening, watching and taking notes. Done deal. But then again, you can always teach. That means setting an example, talking to others and sharing what you know. Sounds easy enough. Of course, some hero types prefer to protect. They build sanctuaries or save habitats. And of course, other folks help by volunteering time and getting involved. Hey, that doesn't sound so impossible after all. But that's because animal rescuers aren't superhuman. They're just people who care. Your home is in the forest But the forest slips away Make room for the city Getting bigger every day As you roam through your jungle It seems so strong and free But will you have a future? The answer's up to me Save that land I know you long to be safe land You can count A hero when we help a friend in need the abandoned and the injured the hungry mouths to feed knowing when to help them and when to let them be the more we learn about them I hope you've had fun rambling with our rescuers and the animals they're working to save. But there are lots more really wild animals all across this wonderful world of ours. So be sure to join me on our next adventure. Until then, this is your pal Spin. Spin you later. A sneak preview of a brand new kids' home video series from National Geographic is coming right up. The adventure begins. Three alien sanitation engineers are accidentally launched into space. Now they're out there, and they've just discovered the most amazing place they've ever seen, Earth. Join Captain Rip Rayon and his fearless crew as they go boldly where no aliens have gone before, exploring 
outrageously. Exploring the strange and wonderful world, the world that's right beneath your feet. <laughs> You'll see mountains erupt in flames. It's hot! Orange hot! Red hot! <laughs> Dive into an ocean full of creatures with no bones and no brains. And others with no bones but lots of teeth. Witness waves so enormous they wipe out anything in their path. Unravel the mysteries of ancient mummies. And meet beings even more bizarre than our alien crew. Things just get stranger by the minute, whether you like it or not. Excellent! You'll discover weird facts about volcanoes, mummies, sharks, insects, wild weather, and more. All with the most entertaining guides on Earth. They came from another world, and they're not leaving until they figure out this amazing planet. Every video is an all-new, all-alien adventure from National Geographic. <laughs> Because who knows the world better than we do? If you'd like to learn more about this amazing new video series, call 1-800-627-5162, weekdays, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. Hey kids, check this out. World Magazine brings you adventure, wildlife, science, and more. Join over one million kids from around the world and become a junior member of the National Geographic Society. You'll get a World Magazine each month. Plus, you'll receive a junior member kit with a membership card, an iron-on world emblem, and an official National Geographic certificate. Twelve exciting issues of World Magazine are just $17.95. Be a junior member, and the world is yours. To order, call 1-800-NGS-LINE.